Hi, welcome back to In Conclusion, We Have No Idea. I'm Camille. I'm Liz. And... We still have no idea. Yeah, yeah, we have no idea. We're really just going through it. Um, no idea how to do a podcast, no idea how to... Cook or clean or, you know, have a sense of purpose. Yeah. All the things, we don't know. kind of any... An incapable adult, really. Yeah. That's the great, the great thing about adulthood is when you turn 18, they just shove you out into the world and they say, well, good luck. And you're kind of just... I think it's really interesting. It's like, you know, high school, you have to ask to use the bathroom. And then, like, two days after you graduate, they're like, yep, we expect you to get a job, go to college, get mortgages and stuff. And you're like, <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What? Yeah. I was not prepared for this. This uh, kind of adulthood. That's all of a sudden my responsibility. Yep. No. I love that. Like go from having like zero freedoms to like all of the freedoms, and then you just kind of are like, I see why people end up doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, and then it's even worse when suddenly all the freedom get taken away at the summer, and then you're like, oh, great. Oh, you mean the Rona? No, I just, specifically in this, this summer, it's the Rona. Last summer, it was just like, I came home, and it was like, what do you mean I can't eat taquitos at 2 a.m.? This is ridiculous. But now it's all of that, that top of pandemic, so. I didn't have that problem. I live at home, and my parents have kind of reached a point where they're like, as long as you're going to school <laughs> and you're going to be moving out soon. Mm-hmm. And as long as you close our door before you go and make chicken nuggets at 3 a.m. Like, whatever. Yeah, I know. But that's the great thing about college is you can make taquitos at 2 in the morning if you want. And literally no one will judge you. In fact, odds are you've got a roommate up who's like microwaving a potato or something. And then you both kind of just look at each other like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wish I could say that that's the case for me. Most of the time I'm just up at two in the morning, like staring at my, just being like, I have to be up in four hours. What am I going to do? Go to sleep? Or do I just stay awake? pull an all-nighter, come home and crap. And the answer to that is, don't, uh, don't be me. Don't pull all-nighters before you. <laughs> They're really not. I've made the mistake this next semester of taking a 7th class, so um. <sighs> that's gonna be just the worst. But I couldn't, I, I couldn't do anything about it because I couldn't take the class at literally any other time. They didn't offer it any other time, which is so dumb. Why would you offer a math class at 7.30 in the morning? That doesn't make any sense. My brain doesn't function before the hours of 10 a.m. to, like, noon, depending on the day. See, I, for years, like, the first three semesters of college, all of my classes started after 10, and I'm gonna be real, some days I struggled to get to my 10 a.m. class on time. So this past semester, when I had an 8.30 a.m. class, that was a very cruel wake-up call. And then- Did you ever go? I did. I went pretty much- I think I went every single day because my roommate gave me a ride, and I felt guilty that she was giving me a ride. So, yeah. Well, I mean, at least at that point you went. Yeah. See, for me, freshman year, my first semester, my classes all started at, like, 10.45, which is so nice, but the problem is, is I have to take the train to class every day, so that means it's, like, I can't just, like, a half hour before class wake up, it's, I have to be up at the very least, like, an hour and a half before I get to class. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that was, um, not fun, but... Freshman year, I ended up taking, I think I took calculus, a mythology class, and what's the other class? 
oh, it was like a, I had to take like a physics seminar because this was back when I was a physics major and they were like, oh, you have to take a seminar about all the research we do at the, at, at your university. I'm like, okay, hey, whatever. Do I have to like participate? They're like, no, not really. And I'm like, cool, I'll just show up. <laughs> and then I took a badminton class, which was by far the best class because I fucking love badminton so much. Is the superior sport. I will say. Yeah, I'm not even good at badminton, so I'm just grateful that my generals required for my major didn't require any sort of a PE credit. I think they just were like, ah, English majors. They, the thing is, they don't need it. My university requires that everybody. Oh, sorry, I just whacked my microphone against my face. My university requires that everybody takes a physical education class, like no matter what. But like uh, badminton, like you don't have to be good at badminton to have fun. Like literally the entire time, we didn't actually end up playing a lot of like actual games of badminton. We played um, shoot the birdie into the basketball hoops and see if we could make a <laughs> make a shot. That was a game we played. We played. Um, you know, like sting pong. Yeah. Like, yeah. We played like a badminton version of that. It's the, that was something we also did. We played a game where you had to like sit in certain places in the badminton court, and then someone would shoot a birdie, and from where you were, you had to keep at least like your feet planted in the same location, sitting down, but you had to like catch the birdie while it was in the air. That was fun. We played. Like, no, like, we played, like, a few real games, but, like, let's be honest, we were there to vibe. We listened to music and played badminton and didn't really, like, I still don't quite know <laughs> exactly how to play the game, but I did learn how to serve. So that was my one, one strong suit was serving, but... It was still fun though. I didn't even have to be good at the game. I could just like sit and hit the little birdies at other people and that counted for a physical education credit. And it was great. Yeah. Oh, and I guess I also took a writing class, but I hated that writing class. I don't, I don't it was gross. See, that just makes me laugh so hard because it's like all throughout high school, teachers were like, it is so much harder in college. They will not take any nonsense and then you get to college and the teach and the professor's just like well we are going to give you an a as long as you hit the birdie a few times during the allotted class time I'm like i think that was the same teacher so freshman year was the same year well that semester was the same one that uh, i went to go get my blood drawn I had to do like some blood tests or whatever. And as I was driving to the train station, because I had to go to class because I had a calculus exam that same day that I had to get my blood drawn. Um, and I passed out while I was behind the wheel. I wasn't actually driving because I was at like a, like a stoplight. I just rolled through the intersection and hit a fire hydrant. It was a great time. Um, but, like the rest of the day, I was just like out of it. But since I was already on campus because I had to take the exam, because spoiler alert, instead of staying home, I still went and took my fucking calculus exam. <laughs> I got a 98 on it, so I don't want to hear from anybody that it was a bad idea because I did fine. But I went into that badminton class and the um, professor in charge was like, you look like shit today, Liz. I was like... That's what you want to hear from your professor. I was like, here's the thing. I... Don't want to talk about it, but I wrecked my car because I passed out. And she was like, what? Why are you in class, Liz? Go home. And I was like, no, I just wanted to, like, I was already on campus. I had an exam that I had to take. She's like, go home, Liz. And she had one of the other girls in the class <laughs> walk me to the train station <laughs> and watch me get on the train to make sure that I, like, actually, like, left campus. That was a great, great time. like that. Like, professors don't give a shit. At least most of them. I think the, like, the, like, 100 level professors care a lot. But, like, the higher level professor you get, like, if you're in, like, a 400 level class, like, they genuinely don't give a shit. 
One time. They're like, sure, go ahead, turn that thing in late by like two weeks, whatever. As long as you hand it in at some point. Yeah. One time. Thank you. My freshman year, I was in a French class because since I'm an English major, my university requires that you take 16 credits of a foreign language. Luckily, I was able to buy eight of those credits, so I only had to take eight credits because I was apparently good enough at French that I didn't need to take the first two classes. Anyways, um, I was in class, and the professor comes up to me. She's like, Camille, did you do the homework? And I was eating a salad, and I looked up and I said, no, I did not do the homework. But this is the first time I've eaten a vegetable in, like, two weeks. So we should appreciate that. And she was so excited about that. That she literally had the class circle up and she was like, Camille has inspired me. We are going to just talk in English about all the good things we are accomplishing to spread the positive vibes. My French professor was a hippie. <laughs> my, my French professor was definitely a hippie, let me tell you. And so That's valid. We spent probably most of the class, there were 14 of us in the class, we probably spent most of the class just talking about, like, the good things we did. And if someone couldn't think of something, we were like, no, you, you did this. Sure you spilled vodka on yourself in the middle of a Snapchat story. But you know what? You also got to go to Florida. That's pretty great. It's just, that was the entire class. And all because I forgot to do my homework, so I decided to make a stupid joke. And I just, that is... See, I don't think that would ever fly in any of, like, the math departments and stuff, because... Everyone is so serious. What? Like, all of the professors that I've had that have, like, genuinely not give a shit are, like, not my major, or, like, involved with either of the majors that I've had in college. Both of the physics and, like, math majors and all of them... Oh, no, no, no. My astronomy professor last semester, not, no, the fall semester, was, um, she was pretty chill. She was the one who was, like, genuinely worried about me when I, like, showed up to class about 20 minutes after waking up from anesthesia after I'd gotten an ear biopsy. She was like, the hell are you doing in class, Liz? I have a consistent pattern of showing up to class and I probably should just stay home and rest. Um, because... I'm a perfectionist, which means that I need to be in class all the time so I can get the best grade that I can. But she, uh, yeah, she spent the whole class, like, just, like, I told her, I was like, um, so here's the thing. I just woke up from anesthesia, like, 20 minutes ago, and if you see me slump over in the middle of class, I'm fine. I'm just tired. And she was like, Liz... Why? What? Why are you here? here? She's like, why are you here? And I'm like, well, I have a lab that I have later today, and I like can't miss it. And she's like, oh no, I guess I totally get that. Like that's okay. <laughs> she's like, but please be safe. Like, don't don't do anything bad. And I'm like, I'm not gonna. I'm barely. I like it took me like ten minutes to walk up three flights of stairs. Do you really think that I'm gonna have enough energy to do literally anything else today? <laughs> She's like, mm, no, I, I can see that. And my other professor, my history teacher for American history, spent one day teaching a sex ed because according to her, the Utah sex educational system is flawed and awful. It is flawed and awful. It is. And so, I mean, I learned more in that one class than I did in a whole semester in high school. It was very informative. She was also, like, cool and rode a bike. She Okay, that was the same professor who almost hit me while riding her bike to class. I should have just taken one for the team and had her hit me on the way to class so everybody got to go home. I have many regrets. No, same. Same. See, my big thing I've discovered as I've started college is... I was a super perfectionist in high school, 
college just wiped me out. Like, at this point, I'm, like, still a perfectionist in the sense that I want to get good grades, but I, I'm i also, like, I don't need to show up to every class to quote. And then it also just, like, wrecked my emotional, like, just my emotions. One time, Caitlin, when she, before she went on her mission, we were hanging out. She was like, Camille, you, like, don't have emotions anymore. College has broken you. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But, like, there was one day where I just was like, I could go to class, or I could watch an entire season of Young and Hungry. Guess which one I ended up doing. Is that correct? Yep, I binged the TV show. And you know what? I still got A's in all of those classes. So I regret nothing. I have this dilemma because I live an hour long train ride away from campus. Like if I go to one class, like if I need to go to one class, I have to go to all of them since I'm already on campus. So like if I have a class that's at like eight in the morning and I need to go to it because it's important and like I can't miss a class because for whatever reason, it means I'm already on campus. I might as well go to all the other classes. So it's harder yeah. for me to justify skipping class if I'm already on campus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I've missed probably like two classes the entire time I've been in college for two years. Which honestly is better than it's uh, like it ever was in high school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I never skipped in high school. I just stressed me out because in high school, if you skipped class, they called your parents. Right. In college, no one's gonna call my mom about anything. Like, unless I like murder someone on campus, my mom literally does not have to find out about a single thing I've done. And there are lots of things she did not find out about. Like, okay, there are some things that I just broke down and told her, like when I went and made out with a rando for our true mascot night, um, I was like, I'm not going to tell her. And then I broke down and called her, and then she called me a hoe. So, like, I shouldn't have done that. What kind of relationship with your mother where your mom can just call you a hoe? Well, she didn't call me a hoe. She. She called you a slut? No, she kind of, I don't know. It was, she I keep me, going. I have so many names that I could go through. She, she didn't call me like anything specific, but it was heavily implied. It was like, it, it was. Oh, so she like low like, key kind of slut shamed you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. She was like, first of all, you're an idiot. Second of all, do you really feel good about yourself for making out with a total stranger? And I'm like. Well, I got a stand-up bit out of it, so yes. I feel a little justified here, mother. And you know, I can't say I've ever had that problem. I don't know, for whatever reason, it's just never been an issue for me. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but, I don't know. Man. College is, like, so much less about class and more about, like, actually, like, and I know that this is different for you because you commute, but it's like living alone is the weirdest thing. It's like, I don't know, it's, I cannot wait for you to live alone because it's the most fun thing. Although I will say my first semester, it was not fun. I cried a lot because I was fairly certain that, uh, well, okay, not the whole first semester, but like the first month, I was fairly certain all my roommates hated me because I accidentally used one of my roommate's cleaning supplies and she got after me for it. So I kind of just like curled up. I literally ran to the church next to my apartment complex. And because the church is always unlocked, it really shouldn't be, but it is. And I just sat in the bathroom at the church and sobbed for a good two hours because I, I thought they hated me. And oh. That's sad. 
I, the first few weeks of college were rough, and I was, I was stressed. But then you know what? The inner, the inner tough girl that I guess has always been within me it was like, all right, Camille, you gotta step it up. No more crying. Cry on the inside like don't, and I did. I. My first semester, I spent a lot of it just kind of goofing off. And then the second semester of college, I uh, got hit in the face with reality. And then I have this problem where I do too much and then never learn from that. Like I did too much math and science in one semester and then I did it again the next semester. And I was like, yeah, this is fine. No, it wasn't fine. Stop that. <laughs> Stop doing that to yourself, Liz. You need... It's like that whole, like, meme that's like, it's time for you to stop. That was me, except for I never learned. So I spent most of freshman year, like, between perfectly fine, not having a mental breakdown, to, like, two weeks later, like, losing my mind. And then... Like, I went through it. But, like, I live at home, so it's not like it was, like, I had roommates that I didn't know, and I was, like, in an unfamiliar place. It was just I overworked myself and thought that that would be fine. You know? Spoiler alert. It wasn't fine. Everything sucked. College is expensive. Mm -hmm. I paid $5,000 to have a mental breakdown in the middle of October. That's what I'm, like, basically saying here. It's just like that John Mulaney quote that's like, I paid $120,000 for someone to tell me to go read Jane Austen, and then I didn't. And you know, that is a mood. I'm going to put that on my graduation cap. I wish. I don't even, like, ugh. And then don't even get me started on that writing class that I had to take freshman year first semester was the dumbest thing it was so stupid i hated it it was like so like artsy and like not like there's like a difference between like artsy like in like a good way and then just like the obnoxious version mm -hmm. it was like the obnoxious version where you're just like this is stupid why am i doing this it was so dumb and the teacher was like you know, you have to participate every single day in class, and me sitting there having social anxiety is like, oh, I don't want it. Please don't make me do this. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and then I did every day when I went home. I was like, I hate this. I want to go home, but I'm already home, and I can't complain about that. And so I'm just gonna go cry in my room for two hours. <laughs> I'll see you guys after dinner. It was the saddest, most pathetic thing. Yeah. But then I would have cookie dough, because I had a cookie dough vending machine at my university, and I was like, you know, this is fine. Makes up for the pain. Yeah. See, I took two creative writing classes, because I really enjoy creative writing, and... Both of them, I got criticized for the way I wrote relationships. Like, okay, to be fair, one of them was completely valid. My creative writing professor was like, Camille, we had to write one short fictional story for that class. She read it, she was like, Camille, does Phoebe have to end up with a man? And I kind of was like, what? what? Romance is cute and fuzzy, and she's like, yeah, but does she have to end up with a man? And I was like, no, she doesn't! And then I just kind of left it up to interpretation. I was like, did she end up with the guy? Did she not end up with the guy? You decide. And then my other one, my other creative writing professor, because I took an entire class where we had to write short stories, we had to write two short stories, and... The professor 
read my short story and he was like, I'd like you to give the ex-boyfriend some redeeming qualities. I'm like, no! I have an ex-boyfriend. He doesn't have redeeming qualities. There's a reason he's an ex-boyfriend. So, yeah, it was, I enjoyed creative writing, but I understand what you're saying, where, where writing professors are often like, they're, they're a little whack, but you know what? My fiction writing professor is probably the favorite professor I've ever had. I may take another class from him just for kicks, not gonna lie. Well, the thing is, is like, I don't mind writing. It's not a matter of like me being like, ooh, like I hate writing. I think it's dumb. It was, I thought the whole, because it wasn't like a creative writing. Like we'd be writing stuff about, we'd go to a museum and then you're oh, supposed great. to talk about like how the museum made you feel, but you can't like use like emotional words. You have to be like describing what kind of, things it invokes inside you and I'm like this is dumb <laughs> I hate this I don't give a shit about this museum I hated it and he's like well that's an emotion I'm like do you want me to write for three and a half paragraphs about how much I hated this museum he's like well that's not exactly what I was looking for I was like exactly <laughs> you want me to get all meta and the only meta feeling I have is that I hate this fucking museum I hate this fucking paper and I don't want to be here yeah. I have a lot of feelings about that class. See, when I had to, when I have to, I'm very good at faking things, like pretending I know what I'm talking about. Because I'm just a very eloquent writer. Like the words I write are beautiful. So even if I have not a single clue what I'm talking about, I usually get like an A or a B on my papers just because they're pretty. Like I did not read one page. Okay. Robinson, it was Robinson Crusoe or something else. I did not read a single page of that. It was Jane Eyre. I did not read one page of Jane Eyre. I read the Sparknote summary and wrote a whole essay, and I got an A on said essay. So... Sounds like me and the Great Gatsby in high school for yeah. Uh, English. <laughs> yeah. We've had this discussion. Yeah, we but, have. Uh, I, that, okay, I can write, like, eloquently, and, like, in a way that's, like, oh, this is an intelligent person. Like, my history class this last semester was the history, history, history of Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, and I didn't buy the textbook. I didn't even pick up the textbook. I didn't rent it. I just didn't. But I wrote two papers about, like, and we had to use the textbook as, like, like a source in our papers and I got an A on both of the papers didn't even like actually read the textbook just did like the uh, supplementary text and stuff and I was like you know what this is this is why college is stupid especially like and this is why I have so many issues like doing like English classes and stuff I'm like you can write if you can write well you'll get an A but it doesn't like <laughs> what you're saying doesn't matter as long as it's how you say it and I hate that. I just want it to be like math, where there's one right answer, and you can only get it in one way, and that's it. There's rules. There's guidelines to follow. And I hate when there's not. Yeah. That's why I'm a math major, not in English or history or communications or... God forbid, a business major, even, like... Uh, I shouldn't trash talk business majors. One of my best friends is a business major. No, I mean, you can trash talk business majors, let's be honest. Yeah. See, I'm an English They're business majors. Because, literally, I sat down one day and was like, Well, English is the only thing that doesn't make me hate myself other than theater. And I've already been told by pretty much everyone that if I become a theater major, I'm going to hate myself and die alone in a, in a dark alleyway because I have no food. And as a 17-year-old, that really upset me. As a 20-year-old, I'm like, you know what? 
they were absolutely right. So I was like, well, an English major is like the only major that doesn't, it, it, that's the only major I can think of that's not going to make me want to walk into the ocean. So I'm an English major. And you know what? I've also, I, I really, it, it, I'm a literature major and a library media minor because I would have been a library media major, but no universities offer that. And oddly enough, I love it. Like, was not expecting to like it this much, but here we are, I guess. Right. And I don't know, it's, just, it's weird. And I was an education major my first couple, the first few semesters of college. Then I discovered that I have absolutely no patience with children. After I had to teach children for a week, I was like, it's not that hard. What is the past tense of run? Run? No! It isn't. But then I look at people like my roommate and my boyfriend who, like, have this passion for teaching. I'm like, uh, yep, this isn't for me. So I'm no longer an education major. And, you know, that, that's probably a good thing. Imagine me having to supervise dozens children. of children or like even like teachers it would just it's a recipe for disaster no matter what just because I have no patience and I'm I, I'm not good at teaching I'm just like well I know what this means I don't know why the rest of you can't get it and you know I think it's good that I acknowledged that so that I'm not entrusted with the lives of a right the lives and brains of a rising generation you know what, that's very important to recognize. Uh, I have always known that I don't like children. Never even fathom. But the, my mom did um, threaten me within an inch of my life, saying that if I get a useless major, that I will um, not be allowed in her house. And my mom says that as a history major, so... She was like, don't be me, Liz. Don't get a useless major. And I was like, well, I mean, useless is subjective. And she was like, no, Liz. Don't do it. And I was like, okay. Okay, Mom, I won't. I won't do it, okay? I just... My mom... told all of us children that very same thing. But... It wouldn't have mattered because I think I planned on being a physics major when I went into college, realized that I, not that I hated it, I just liked math more, and then everyone was like, I thought you loved physics so much. I'm like, I'm allowed to have other likes in the world, you know? I was like, I can have other things that I enjoy. That's like, Liz, but you hated math. And I was like, I'm allowed to change my opinion on things sometimes. Most of the time, my heels in, and I refuse. But on some things, I'm okay with it. And that's the story of how I became a math major. So, and then Corona showed up right yeah, as I started corona. making friends in my new major program, and I was like, you know, this is why I don't make friends. Yeah, yeah. People said the same thing to me about because they were like. You're an English major? I thought you loved theater. And I'm like, I do love theater, but not enough to risk my life for it. And I still get to do theater stuff. I still i am able to do, like, their student written and directed plays. Um, I'm still able to, um, I still, I, I'm with the comedy club on campus, and that's improv, which is theater, and I just, I'm like the VP of that, so... I, you can have other interests without making it your major, and that's an important yeah. graph. Yeah, I think my problem is, is I make school like my entire identity because I don't have anything else. And everyone's like, "Oh, you could join clubs." I'm like, "Here's the thing: I live far away. You know how incon like inconvenient it is for me to join a club." And they're like, "Well, they have uh, like meetings during the day," and I'm like. I'm on campus, and I'm going to class the entire time. I don't really have breaks in between classes because I want to be on campus for the least amount of time possible. So whenever you're holding your um, activities, I'm either in class or I'm home. 
Like, I don't... I don't have time to make friends, but, like, sometimes I do, and then they get ripped away from me because coronavirus showed up and decided to ruin my life. Not really. I... It didn't ruin my life as much as it ruined other people's, let's be honest. Yeah. I'm just bit about it because it was inconvenient. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? And, yeah. Yeah. Making friends at college is interesting. Like, um, at my university, they set up for freshmen, like, a few days before class actually started. They had all the freshmen come down. And they did, like, a three-day orientation where they split us off into groups based on our interests. So I ended up with a group of theater kids, which was weird because they were all theater majors and I was an English major. And yeah, it was weird. But um, we got split up into these groups and we were like sent around campus to like do fun activities together as an attempt to get us to like bond and make friends. And I'm not gonna lie, I was literally only friends with one of those people after the after the fact. Like everyone else it was like, well, nice meeting you guys. And then I honestly don't I did not make friends my freshman year. I'm gonna be real. After I discovered, hey, my roommates don't actually hate me, I was kind of just friends with my roommates and like random people that we'd meet at church. And that was kind of it. But then I can't relate. It wasn't until, like, last semester, like, fall of 2019, where it was, like, where suddenly I was, like, at odds with my roommates again. And there was a whole reason behind that. Um, It wasn't, we all kind of collectively realized at the same time that all of these problems were stemming from one person. We kind of bonded together again, but at that point, we'd already decided that we weren't living together anymore. It was fine. And, but it was like, I didn't make friends in the way that college expected me to. I was in a play and I didn't, I'm kind of an antisocial person. So one of my best friends, um, the business major I mentioned earlier, actually, she just came up to me one day and was like, we're friends now. And I'm like, oh, okay. And that was actually really good for me because I probably wouldn't have made friends otherwise. And then she just kind of dragged me around and was like, this is my friend. You are friends with her now too. She just like forced me to make friends. And God, I wish. That ended up being really nice. And then also through that play, I met my boyfriend and he's introduced me to a bunch of my current friends. So it's like college like sets up all of like these super like complex events for you to like mix and bingle and meet people and then you don't ever meet people that way you like you don't you meet people either in class or at like weird club things you don't ever meet people at dances or social events and that's that's just the truth unless you're like a super social butterfly which i'm not so yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just antisocial. I'm on campus to go to class, not really to talk to people. I mean, I am not like, oh, I hate everybody. Like, I refuse to talk to other. Like, it's not that. It's that um, I have a hard time talking to people first. Like, if other yeah. people come yeah. up and introduce themselves to me, like, it's fine. I can hold a conversation at that point, but it's like, I can't go and introduce myself to other people. I just can't. So that's hard. Cause my mom's like, you need to make friends when you're on campus. And I'm like, mom, <laughs> I don't want to talk to people when I'm on campus. I don't even participate in like class discussions ever. Like, I just don't. Please leave me alone. I just want to be quiet and sad in peace. Yeah. But instead I'm just quiet and sad and not in peace because my mom wants me to talk to people and sometimes people come up and talk to me and I never know what to say because I'm always like, um, um, 
I don't know. And I just kind of stutter because um, when I'm anxious or tired, I really stutter. It's like bad. And so people are like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm doing great. I'm just going to go outside for a minute. If you hear screaming, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. See, I... My brain is always like, all right, don't screw it up. So naturally I do. For example, before I started dating my boyfriend, his older brother was in my Harry Potter class with me, which I could, I could talk for hours about that Harry Potter class. It's great. But I cannot believe that Daniel Radcliffe wrote, starred in, and did everything for Harry Potter, and no one else contributed at all. Um, but, I don't know, he, um, so this guy's older brother came up to me and he's like, hey, you're friends with my little brother. And my brain was like, all right, he's holding out his hand for you to shake it. You should probably do that. And you should probably introduce yourself and not look weird because you really like his little brother and you want to make a good impression so that he'll date you. And I just went, yeah, okay, and walked away. <laughs> Why can I see that interaction going on in my... I can see that. I can imagine it so vividly. And, and it's very on brand. Oh my gosh. And I'm just like... And my brain is just like... The little person who runs my brain was just like beating their head against the table. And just like, no! You did everything no. you That was do. a mistake. Why? And He'll still bring, we're really good friends now, so he'll still bring that interaction up. He'll still be like, hey, remember when I tried to come over and start, like, a nice conversation with you to see who this girl that my brother liked so much was? And I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm not proud of that, but you know what? We're friends now, and I, it's fine, it's fine. We don't well, need to talk about it. Thing, Camille, if it makes you feel better, um... I had this lab partner for two semesters in a row. A massive crush on this lab partner. And we were working with high powered lasers in one of my labs. And oh, yeah. my little dumbass brain, social anxiety ridden idiot, um, wasn't paying attention to the laser we were using. Because originally, we were just supposed to burn a hole in a piece of paper. Like, that was the whole thing. We were just supposed to see at what um, power level would the laser burn through the paper. My dumbass stopped watching the paper because I was making a joke. And then the paper caught on fire. And so I had to take this burning piece of paper, throw it in the sink, set it, you know pour water on it and walk back and my lab partner was like well that was exciting and I was like no I don't want to talk I mean it's, it's fine everything's fine I'm like I'm just I'm just gonna go sit here under the table and cry for a little bit like if you'll excuse me that was the same lab that um I burned a hole in a pencil using like uh lenses to focus light and we set the pencil down in the middle of the beam while we went and talked to the uh, TA for the lab. And then we turned around and the pencil was starting to smoke and I had flashbacks to the laser. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, please don't catch on fire. Please don't catch on fire. Please don't catch on fire. And I ran over and there was like this hole that was starting to be like bored into the pencil. And I looked at my lab partners and I was like, I'm having flashbacks. I'm going to go walk outside for a little bit. And they were like, okay, Liz. I had a rough time in that class, mostly because since I had the crush on my lab partner, I would just sit there and make dumbass jokes just because that's what I do. Yeah. And then something would catch on fire. I'd burn something. I would switch wires and short circuit something. Or I'd crash a spring-loaded car into my own hand. So, memories. You know, 
If nothing else, that lab partner was like, dang, this girl is entertaining. Or like, dang, this girl's a fucking idiot, Jesus. And then I switched majors and I haven't seen her since, so like, maybe those were the best. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's another thing that happens in college. Suddenly it's like, dating becomes a much bigger deal, I don't know. And I, it's, I think it's partly because we live in Utah. Like, my first semester of freshman year, I was still technically dating someone, but it was long distance, and I don't think I was, like, still super interested in this guy. I think I was kind of just there because it was like, we dated through high school. It, it, I gotta. And then one day I was like, no, you don't gotta. So he gave me permission to date on campus if I wanted to, and I attempted that, like, once, and it didn't go well. Um, it's actually really, it's actually like the reason I bonded with my roommate. So I went to a family home evening activity, which, you know, first mistake. Um, and there was this guy there and he was talking to me and he was like saying all these really nice things. He's like, wow, you are like the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And naturally, since I never got complimented like that, I loved it. And he was like, I'd love to take you on a date. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, please take me on a date. And so we set up a time, and he texted me before that time and was like, hey, that's not going to work. Can we reschedule love? And I'm like, huh? I was a little, no, it was hun. He called me hun. And I was like, yeah, okay, a little weird that you called me that. So we rescheduled. I put on a super cute outfit. I sat in my, I've been in college for like probably two months. I think it was like either September or October. I sat in my apartment with my cute little outfit. I was so excited. My roommates were so excited. It was great. Two hours after he's supposed to pick me up, I sent him a text. I'm like, hey, are we still going to dinner tonight? He's like, hey, I totally forgot. I've been throwing up all day long. I don't think we can, I don't, I think we're gonna have to cancel. Can we reschedule for another time, my darling? And I, was so angry. First of all, he didn't have the brain to tell me earlier that day, hey, by the way, I, I'm going to have to cancel again. And second of all, he thinks that because he interacted with me for an hour one time that we're like in love and that he can call me things like my darling. I don't, I don't even like, I like, my current boyfriend, he'll call me, like, dear and honey and love, and I'm totally fine with that. But I think if he calls me darling, I think I'd have, like, flashbacks and be like, no, no, we're not doing that. So if he's listening to this, you've been warned, love. And so, but it, so I was just like, first of all, don't call me darling. You haven't earned that, right? Second of all, believe it or not, I am a busy person, and I have other things going on other than going on a date with you, so you'll have to get back to me on that one. And then I ghosted him, and you know what? That was, like, the bravest thing I've ever done. Like, I think, and my roommates were all, like, they're cheering me on, and then we all got Wendy's. And, you know, I think that's, like, when we all became friends. So, like, sure, I didn't get to go on a date, but then me and my roommate bonded. So it was like, it, it ended up being a win situation. So yeah, it's just, college is weird. Friends and dating in college is weird because it's oddly harder than it was before. Like there's more pressure and it's just more difficult. I don't know how to- Well, and it's in Utah. So of course you're gonna get married at like 20, right? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Welcome to Utah, where that thing is so common. Like, I've talked to people, like, from out of the state of Utah, and they're like, so, do people really get married at, like, 20? And I'm like, okay, well, here's a little perspective. We graduated high school, and two months after we graduated, there was a girl in my graduating class who was married, and we were all barely 18, 
and that wasn't uncommon. <laughs> like, everybody gets married so young here, and it worries me, because I'm like, listen, we're all in college. We're still dumb. You ever been yeah. to a college party? We're all fucking idiots. Like, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you're a college student, you are capable of being the dumbest person on the face of the earth. Yeah. And see, I don't necessarily think it's... See, for me, it's not necessarily so much the getting married young. Like, I mean, I kind of draw the line at 21. I think that's the youngest I'd want to get married. It is, like, roughly 21. So... Oh God. You must be able to legally drink to be able to yes. legally have yes. uh, a marriage license. <laughs> yes, that, that's where my brain is. But the thing that's concerning to me is the people who are, like, dating each other for, like, a month and then deciding to get married. I'm like, hold that on. genuinely hold like, on. concerns me. I'm like, you really don't know that person. You know yeah. that, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. Like... Yeah, I'm just like, ah, uh, um, look. That's not a basis for a healthy relationship. Yeah. yeah. You gotta know that you can at least tolerate the person for an extended period of time. I think, yeah, and it's like, there are like so many things. It's like, like, I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, there is no way that in the month or two months you've been dating this person, You've had time to do, like, all the things that you would do before you, like, took that, like, have you, like, seen if your families get along? Do you, like, have you spent an extended amount of time with their family? Because I think that's important. Like, you should probably be spending an extended amount of time with that person's family. Like, a few mm -hmm. days, just because, like, you're going to have to do that at some point. And you want to make sure you can handle it. And it's like, you should have probably met, like, definitely immediate family, but probably also grandparents. You should have met grandparents at that point. Um, you should have, like, like, whenever I see people who are getting engaged after a month or two months, which it happens a lot down at my college, too, it's like, you, there are things you need to talk about before you get married. So either you guys started talking about, like, kids and finances and where you want to live and, like, all the things that go into a marriage. Either you guys started talking about that, like, right after you started dating or you've not talked about it. And the second one is a little more concerning, but they're both concerning. It's like, there are things you should talk about. And... Utah marriage culture is just concerning, period. Yeah, that's another thing. College introduced me to the mutual app, which is a dating app. I don't think I'm allowed it's, on that app. Yeah, it's... <laughs> don't, don't... I don't think that there'd be very many people who'd... Uh... Yeah, don't, don't, don't envy that. Honestly, I've heard that um, you, people have had more gross interactions on mutual than they have on Tinder. And I'm like, oh, wow. And like, I don't know. It was just because mutual is full of a bunch of horny Mormons who are just repressed. Yeah. At least on Tinder, people are like, you know what? It is what it is. You either want to deal with this or you don't. <laughs> it's not like you have that pressure of finding someone and then you're also repressed, and I just feel like people on Tinder, at least in my, although in my experience, I really can't say whether or not that um, it's a consistent thing around everywhere, because my Tinder is very different from, like, everybody else's in this godforsaken state. Yeah. yeah. I met a guy on Tinder, I mean, not Tinder, mutual. We talked for a good few weeks, and he was, like, he lived in Arizona, and he was or Nevada, he was going to drive up, we were going to go on a date, that never happened, and one day he just stopped talking to me altogether, and just didn't say anything to me for months, and then right around the same time I started dating my boyfriend, he was like, hey, you know what I just realized? 
we never went on a date. And I was like, um, uh, I got bad news for you, pal. Uh, that sounds like an ish you and not an ish me. Yeah, it's like, uh, you had your shot and, um, neither- You blew it. You completely blew it, and now I'm kind of dating someone else, so... Congratulations. Yeah. You played yourself. Yeah. It was... He still follows me on Instagram, so... He just has to watch me post a million pictures of me and my boyfriend and just has to think, dang. Yeah. That sounds like... You know a what? issue for someone else. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I... My boyfriend's the greatest guy in the entire world, and I love him, so, like, I'm glad that guy ghosted me, truth be told. God, I can't relate. I mean, it doesn't really affect me very much, let's be totally honest. My, my Tinder is just full of people who don't want to um, initiate a conversation. So it's just that my Tinder is just sad. It's just sad. Yeah. Anything in my life. Just kidding. That's why I'm going to therapy. Woo, we love therapy. Speaking of therapy, but. this is totally not on our topic of college, but I feel like the 12 people who listen to this podcast need to know. Yesterday I went to my therapist. When I say I went, I mean I sat in my bed and video chatted with my therapist. And we talked about a lot of good things. And then I was like, hey, my DM for D&D is super concerned that I write all of these super tragic, horribly scarring backstories for my characters. And he's afraid that I might be projecting. Can we analyze that a bit? We spent 20 minutes going through every bad thing that has ever happened to me, like going through my childhood and teenage years. Like, have you, like, cause I was like, it's weird. I feel like I've grown up in a loving household. Like, we started, like, picking it apart, like, trying to find out if there was, like, an incident. And you know what the conclusion he finally came to was? Hmm. That I have... You're just dramatic? Yes. He was like, you just have a very active imagination. And... You were a theater kid in high school. Like, I think that's genuine. I think that's genuinely it. Like, I got psychoanalyzed for 20 minutes just for my therapist to be like, oh yeah, you've just got a very active imagination. And if that is not the most on-brand thing that's ever happened to me, I don't know what is. See, my therapist, one time we were talking, and then the concluding statement there was, well, we're going to talk about your mommy issues next week, Liz. Oh, I was like, okay, like, hey, Jackie, I'll see ya. Therapists like doing that. They like dropping a bomb on you and just saying, join us next week. And I'm like... Yeah, it's basically like the uh, to be continued, <laughs> but every week. Yep. Like, therapy is just a very dramatic TV show that ends on a cliffhanger every week. It's basically like a very dramatic monologue for yeah. like an hour. <laughs> yeah. With like a little bit of commentary. Yeah. <sighs> but you know what? I still have no idea. <laughs> me neither. College is a mystery to me, and... I mean, technically, started junior year this next semester, but like, do I still know what I'm doing? No. No. I. Am, so. Yeah. I'm, so I'm just, you know. You're in college, and I am still just like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I just. Nobody does. I just know that they give you a ton of money every year, and then you just attempt to educate me. So. Attempt. Yes. But anyways, in conclusion, we have, I have no, no idea, idea about college. I have, I have no, no idea. idea. No idea. The only I mean, thing you know about college is it's the most chaotic my life has ever been, and I miss it with my whole heart. 
Yeah, no, I have a lot more to say about college, but we can that's talk. more like, like the things that I have to say are like entire like topics of conversation, not like. <laughs> we'll get to those eventually. We've got a lot yeah. of trauma to break down and we're going to get to all of it eventually. This is like therapy, but instead of constructive therapy, it's Camille and I bitching about things for an hour every week. It's great. Not every week. Every, every other week. I don't know. When do we have, when, when do we do this? I feel like we're on like a pretty good every other week schedule. Like I think we missed last week. It's fine. We'll figure fine. it out eventually. It's fine. We have no idea how to do a podcast. I think that's the whole premise of this podcast is we have no idea. Yep. Yep. Join us next week when we still have, have no, no idea. idea. And now, enjoy this very odd music that I stole from the internet.